Y'all, this is my war cry song right now. <laughs> I know he's able. Come through again. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Cause you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. And I know, I know, you never. You can do all things. Cause you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. And I know, I know, you never. Y'all listen to this real quick, just real quick. Never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. Listen, he never will. He never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. Y'all, he ain't never lost the battle. I serve a God who was the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He ain't never lost the battle. He don't have a reputation of losing battles. He ain't been losing battles, and he ain't about to start with your battle. I'm telling you, the battle is not yours. <laughs> it belongs to God. It belongs to God, and he never loses. He never loses. Listen to this. You can do all things. I'm telling you, God can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. And I know y'all get to hear this, but today I want to encourage you today to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, in Exodus 14, David, I mean, uh, sorry, but Moses, he told him, he said, he told the Israelites, the Israelites was like, well, God told Moses, let me start from the beginning of this. He told Moses, he said, Moses, tell the Israelites to go and camp out and camp by the Red Sea. He said, go and camp there, which you don't, with, 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 Israelites didn't understand. Was like, wait a minute, why would you bring us out here? This is a dead end. This is a dead end. Why would you bring us here? They was like, we could have just stayed in Egypt to serve the slaves. Wasn't there not big enough graves there in 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 Egypt? Why? And Moses told him, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still, be still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Be patient. God is going to come through for you. He ain't never failed us. Hasn't he proven himself over and over and over and over again in our lives? God has proven himself. You know, in the 50 years that I've been living, I know that's a short time to a whole lot of people and a long time to others, but I have never seen God. That's why I'm so passionate. And listen, just because things didn't work out the way I thought they were going to work out, God, God still, I still won. It didn't come through the way I thought it was going to come through. But the battle was still won. It was still won. I'm here to tell you today that if you stand still and you keep your foot planted in God's word, planted in the presence of God, just like God told uh, Moses, he said, stretch out your staff. He divided the Red Sea. He divided the Red Sea. That dead end opened up for them and no longer was a dead end. But it was a dead end to their enemies. Their enemies was some come to those waters. But not the Israelites. Let me tell you something. For some of you guys, I want to encourage you today, just like God allowed that situation with Moses, just like he allowed it with Moses and the Israelites. And he said, listen, y'all, I got to get the glory out of this. I got to get the glory. He used Pharaoh's evil. Pharaoh was evil. See, God is not evil, but he will use the evil to get our attention, to get the glory. I'm telling you, he is the, the thing that's ailing you right now. Listen, our economic, our, our economy is in a crisis right now. Our, our the, the anxiety is just flooding our nation. Suicide rates are up. Empl unemployment rates are crazy. People are losing their jobs. They losing their minds. You know why? Because they have no trust. They don't know who their creator. You know what hurts me? 
And I don't judge, and I'm not allowed to judge, and I don't judge. I don't even want to judge. Not, not. I just can't do it. My heart, it's, it's just. I'm so compassionate for people going through it. But when I see people that's been in ministry for years, that preach, talked, and walked the word of God, turn around and take their own life, it breaks my heart. Because some way, somewhere, somehow, although they heard it and rehearsed it, they truly didn't believe it. It hurts my heart when somebody who's not even a part of ministry didn't really get a chance to really know who God is. See, when you really know who God is, when you really know who he is, when the devil comes in like a flood, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God will lift up a standard against him. You know this thing. You know without a shadow of a doubt that God is going to work all these things together for those who love him. He said all things works together for the, give, for the good of those who love Love God and are called according to his purpose. You were born, wasn't you? He created you, didn't you? You have a purpose. And as long as you love God and as long as you trust God, your battle, let me tell you something. This battle, this battle that we're going through right now, it's nothing to God. Just like he did with Pharaoh, just like he did with the Jehoshaphat. You think that God didn't know those nations was going to come after Jehoshaphat? You think he didn't know? He knew. He knew. He knows this day was going to happen. He knew this pandemic was going to sweep through this land like never before. He knew it. He knew the presidential election was going to turn out the way it's going to turn out. God knew this economic, our, 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 our economy was going to act a fool. He knew this. He knew this. He knew that some people would lose jobs only to open up doors to give you better ones. I'm going to tell y'all something. For some of y'all, God been calling you off your job for a long time anyway. For some of y'all, God has told y'all to make moves and you're not making them. And so he's closing doors. Because if he don't shut them, you won't move when he tell you to move. And so in this time between the shut door and the open door, he is saying, I just need you to trust me. I've chosen to trust God. You know, I just came off of a 21 day consecration, a, a prayer consecration, being in my prayer closet. And God told me, he said, I want you during this time. I need you to talk to me like never before, but I also need you in my word. And I also need you to hear from me like never before. And I was able to, and that's why I wasn't on camera as much because I took some time away to allow God. And guess I, every now and then I would, you know, get into my groups and, and minister in my groups and just kind of being obedient to God and letting God download some things in me and work some things out in my own self so that when it was time for me to give out, I could be clear in what God wants me to say to his people. <laughs> even in my clients, even in my clients, even though I don't talk about God the whole time, we're talking about healing and, and, and dealing with their, their traumatic experiences. The Holy Spirit within me gives me what I need for his people. I'm telling you. And so for some of y'all, God is saying, if you would just give me, I, told, I was in church yesterday and God gave me a word and he says seven days, seven days of prayer. If people would just submit themselves to trust me and give me seven days of a sacrificial praise, seven days, three, six, nine, and 12. And throughout the day, throughout those hours, and those hours are set, those three, six, nine, and 12, those hours are set for you to remember to get in God's face. Assign your hours to something. Assign your hours to the leaders of this nation. Assign your hours to gratitude. I'm going to use three o'clock to go and tell God how thankful I am. And I don't care how redundant it is. You wake up and you tell God, God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for starting me on my way, God. I thank you for giving me all the activities. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody woke up this morning and couldn't see. Somebody woke up this morning and couldn't walk, but not me, God. I woke up this morning. And I can tell you, thank you. I can say good morning, Holy Ghost. God, I give you permission. I give the Holy Spirit within me permission to lead me and guide me and, and, and take control of my day, God. I won't move unless you say move. I won't sit unless you say sit, God. I give the Holy Spirit power and authority to eradicate and irrigate anything in me that keeps me separated from you, God, Lord. I thank you for your presence, God. And Lord, I don't want anything keeping me from your presence. 
presence, God, Father. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command my mind to come under subjection to your word. I command my house to come under subjection to your word, God. I thank you for your word, God. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your son that came and shed his life, Lord, Father, for me so that I may have life and have it more abundantly. God, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for being my shepherd. I thank you for being my deliverer. I thank you for being my provider, God. I thank you for being my healer, God. I thank you for being my way maker, God. I thank you for making a way out of no way, God. I thank you for trusting me with trials and tribulations, God, so that you may get the glory, God. I thank you for the purpose that you have over my life. I thank you for my marriage. I thank you for my children, God. I thank you for taking me to the next level, God. God, I am open and I am available to your word, God. God, whatever it is you would have me to do in this season, God, I surrender it to you, God. I surrender my life to my purpose, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, you begin to talk to God. This is the thing. And don't be so selfish. God, I'm going through this, God. And Lord, they shut doors. You don't think God heard you the first time? You don't think God know they shut doors? Okay, address it. He said, you have not because you ask not. So begin to decree and declare. Have a prayer where you're decreeing and declare. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that this day, Father, in the name of Jesus, that generational curse, generational curses are broken over my family. I decree and declare that alcoholism got to go, Father. Drugs and drugs got to go, Father. Obesity has to go. Sickness and disease, cancer, high blood pressure, Father, low blood pressure, God. Diabetes, God. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, molestation, God, Father. Emotional wounds, God, Father. Low self-esteem, low self-confidence, God. Those generational curses are broken, God. Lord, I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, you begin to pray, decree, and declare. Decree and declare that you will get up and walk in his purpose. Decree and declare that God will open up doors for you, that he will give you favor in the areas that he is calling you to in Jesus' name. Give, decree and declare that your children will be saved. Decree and declare that your husband will be saved. Decree and declare. Some of y'all asking God, Lord, I'm, I don't want to be by myself. I want a husband. So God, I decree and declare, God, that you eradicate anything in me that's keeping me separated from you because we're going to go back to that, God. Cast out any belief system that's going to um, uh, cause me to draw negativity into my life and relationships. God, I ask you to sever the soul ties of old relationships, God. So as you bring in the new, God, I'm not bringing in the old. The old is not there. And they ain't got to try to tamper with the new. But God, we're asking for a refreshing, God, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare, God, you said that I was going to promises of my life over my life, God. So I decree and declare, God, that my ears are open. I decree and declare, Father, in the name of Jesus, that I will live my life, God. I will hunger and thirst after righteousness. I will seek ye first the kingdom of God so that all those things will be added unto me, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name, begin to decree and declare over your life. Call in those things as though they are in your life. Lord, I decree and declare, Father, that my children will go to the best colleges if that's what you say God I decree and declare income God in my house God Lord you open up a wave of income God that'll give me more time Lord to spend time with you and to walk in my purpose God that I don't have to work harder I can work smarter God Father Lord Father I ask for strategies God I ask for strategies God right now in this season Father in the name of Jesus for some of y'all decree and declare God that all my needs are met God and I'm walking into my want season Father in Jesus name that I came in this coronavirus virus one way, but I will come out on top, Father, in Jesus' name. I decree and declare, Lord, some of y'all need to go into prayer for other people. Sally's marriage is acting up, God. Father, her children are acting a fool. And God, I ask you right now, Father, I ask for a peace in her home and peace in her mind and peace in her marriage. I'm talking about you find a way to pray and talk to God. Seven days of prayer. You sacrifice seven days of prayer. Seven days. And you watch God do something for seven days from this day forward. And I'm going to keep saying it seven days to the end of the year. Like, Athena, what are you seven saying seven days? 21 days ago, keep saying it until you understand that seven days, seven is the number of completion. You take and sacrifice seven days, seven days, and your whole house come to, under subjection to those seven days. 
to those seven days of prayer, to those seven days of seeking God's face, to those seven days, you in God's face, you in God's face, take some music, put it on in your house, drive out the enemy. He can't stand it. And you get in God's face. And every time you think about it, you begin to praise God. You see somebody walking down the street limping. God, I ask you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you to give them strength in their legs, God. Father, I ask you, Lord, this woman with her children, God, that our children are blessed, God, Father, Lord, that their needs are met, Father, in Jesus' name. People sitting at the bus stop, God, I ask you, Father, I speak transportation in their life. Don't be selfish with your prayer. Seven days of prayer, you watch God move. You watch God move in your life. You ain't got to be selfish. Just like he's been winning battles all throughout the word of God. Some of y'all, he's been winning battles your whole life. You've been under God's grace and mercy your whole life. And you still don't trust him. Just like the Israelites. Let me tell y'all something. Don't y'all be like the Israelites were. Don't y'all be like the Israelites and the first ones that can't go see the promised land. Because God then rained manna from heaven, divided the Red Sea, did this, did that, did this. And you still don't trust him. And you cannot get the promises that he promised over your life. I'm telling you, don't you don't you just let your children get it. You want some of it too. How you going to get your promises? You going to start trusting God. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to trust you, God, because you never lost a battle, and you ain't going to start with mine. If you can do all of that in the Word, you can do all of that, and all these people got these testimonies. Y'all, it is hot in here. Y'all been doing my t-shirt press, Lord Jesus, and it's hot in here. But if you can do all of that in the Word, you can do it in my life. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So today, I want to encourage you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And watch God move in your life. Seven days of prayer. Seven days of prayer. But when we come together and we all come together in prayer and fasting, it is a beautiful, powerful thing. Listen, as always, as always, if you need prayer, you need me to pray on your behalf, you say, Miss Athena, you know, I'm just having a hard time getting in God's face. Listen, reach out to me on, on in my messenger. Let me know what it is you need to prayer for. I'm going to agree with you in prayer. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to take that prayer. I'm going to agree with you. And then I delete it out of my, my inbox and then so that it can stay private. If you want to reach out to me and you say, Athena, I think I need to start my healing journey. I've realized that I have a belief system that has caused me to go in these cycles. And although I win in some areas of my life, I am totally defeated. I feel defeated in other areas of my life. And if I can just get a few sessions in with you to sit down and talk with you so that you can hold me accountable to my healing journey, reach out to me at, six, at Athena the Coach at www.athenathecoach.com or you can call me at 614-845-0444. Um, I prevail coaching services. And I'll be more than happy to schedule a session with you. Get your session in. Get, it's, the, it's the best investment you're going to ever make. Also, um, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about, I want to see here, is 21 days. We're going to do 21 days of healing 21 days of healing i'll be doing the 21 days of healing january um the second week of january oh my calendar over the second week of january starting the first day of the second week of january we're doing 21 days of healing let me tell you something where we're going to do our vision board in the 21 days believe it or not we're going to accomplish a lot of those 21 days of healing i'm excited about it. i've been working on it you guys hopefully this journal gets finished i believe the journal that accompanies that accompanies I Heal on Purpose, The Toxic Wound. So if you don't have this book and you want to go with us on the 21-day journey of healing, the 21-day journey of getting through our Christmas season, you guys, the reason I'm going to wait till after the Christmas season, people say, why do you wait? I'm waiting for after the Christmas season because a healing process can, it, oof, it can pull at your emotions. And so for some of you guys, the holidays are a hard season already, and I really don't want to pull at those emotions that way right then. And even though God is a healer, I have found that I want to get out of the holiday season before we do our 21 days of healing. So if you're looking forward to that, I will actually have a link that I'll put up for you, for you guys um, here shortly within the next week or two that you can sign up. Get ready. Get your book. You can start reading it if you want to, but we will be following 
the I Healed on Purpose, the Toxin, the Wound is So. I'm super duper excited about that. God has got me on a new, another mission, you guys, and I'm so excited. About it. And in my coaching program, and I'll be talking about that more towards the beginning of the year. But I want y'all to know that we don't have to stay stuck. So if you, you're looking for somebody to help you to walk through your healing journey, I am here for you. I am here for you. I know that God is calling you to the next level, but we got to get that rubbish out the way. It is time for you to live your best life in a pandemic, in a pandemic, in a pandemic, in a pandemic. Come on, rise up, rise up. I want you to come out of this better than you went in it. Like, Lord, we got through a pandemic. God, we was in a pandemic and I came out better than I was when I was in it. No fear, no anxieties. I've learned how to fight my battles with my hands surrendered to God. I've learned to tell myself to shut up, tell my emotions to shut up. I've dealt with my past. I've forgiven. I've been getting to understand while I reason and think the way I do. I began getting to cast down those thought systems attached to those things. And I'm moving forward in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, it's your turn. It's your turn to win. So remember, God ain't never lost the battle, and he never will. So you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Thanks for watching, and you have a wonderful day.